Now let's say we want to find the nearest intersection. All we have to do is hold down the clear button to get out of the screen. We can go through the FMS ta tab to get to the nearest page and then cycle down to intersections. And what we can see here, if we highlight the cursor by holding the FMS knob and cycling through, we can find all the different intersection points. Like before, it draws a white arrow or dashed line, I mean, uh, to that intersection. It gives you a little label with the name of it. it, gives you the bearing and also the distance, the latitude and longitude. And then it tells us here this is a reference VOR, the name of the VOR, the frequency, the heading, and the distance. And we can do that for all the different information over here. By the same token, we can look at NDBs and Right now we're at the nearest page for intersections. All we have to do is scroll through here on our list for the nearest functions, and we can see a list of NDBs, and we can scroll through that list using the FMS knob. What we'll first do is hit the center of it, and then we can rotate through. And like before, it cycles through the NDBs, and we can see the different symbols uh, if it's an NDB or if it's a, an outer marker or an inner marker, for example. And then we've got the uh, bearing distance to that NDB. And we also have information associated with the NDB, the latitude and longitude, and then also the frequency. And if we uh, wanted to search for an NDB by name, all we have to do is go to the waypoint uh, list and then go to NDB information hit the FMS knob, and now we can dial in the identifier for the NDB that we might have in mind. And so that's all there is in terms of NDB. So the next thing we'll look at is VORs. So now we can look at uh, VOR information, and much like the NDB, all we have to do is change the page we're in, and here we can see the VOR information. And if I hit the FMS cursor, I can change this field to find a different VOR if I so choose. And I've got the information here. I've got the symbol. It tells me it's a DME. I've got the name. I've also got other information in terms of the uh, magnetic variation. This one happens to be in Canada. And we've got the position and latitude and longitude, the frequency of the VOR, and the nearest airport. And we can also change or scroll through our, uh, our page to look at the nearest function, and we can see the nearest VORs, and here we can see a list, and I can either hit the FMS button or I can hit the VOR button down here. That highlights this cursor, and if I rotate the FMS knob, it cycles through the VORs in this list, which should be within 200 nautical miles from the position, current position of the airplane. And if I hit the frequency button, it should tell me this is the frequency, and if I hit enter, it loads it here on the standby, so it's very quick for me to swap the frequency. I don't have to sit there and turn the knob and tune in the frequency for the VOR. The computer will automate as much of that for me as possible, just for ease of use. So now let's look at user-defined waypoints, and the Garmin G1000 will allow us to store up to 1,000 of these waypoints. What we'll do is rotate our FMS knob till we get to the waypoint uh, folder and then we can go to user waypoint information. Here we can see we've already got three of them defined. Now let's say we wanted to find a, a new fourth one. What we can do is hold down the uh, range button until we get the cursor. We can move it around with the joystick and then we can hit the new button. And that will put a crosshair which is centered on the location where the cursor was where we're going to make our new waypoint. And then it tells us that we can put in a name. So right now it says USR00. We'll just accept that hit the uh, enter key. Now we can change this temporary field by hitting enter. If it's temporary when the system shuts down this will get deleted from memory whereas if it's not checked it will be stored in memory so that the next time you power on it will still be there. Next we've got the waypoint type. Now it's defaulting to a radial and a distance from Frederick which is FDK and there's really several different ways we could do this. The first is we could specify two radials. And so here it's using Frederick and Baltimore. And 
Where these two radials intersect will define the waypoint. Alternatively, we could do a radial and a distance because a radial and a distance is enough to know a position fix. And so here it's just Frederick and it's using a radial and distance. And alternatively again, we could give it the latitude and long longitude of the waypoint if we so happen to know it. <clears throat> In any event, it's usually not a big deal because you can uh, move your cursor on the map and it will automatically know where the cursor is and take care of all that for you. So here we can see USR000 is now in our waypoint list. And by the way, we can hide the list by hitting the soft key if we want to just declutter the screen. Hit the FMS knob to activate the cursor. Cycle through. So there's USR000. Let's say, for example, I don't like the name. I want to rename it. Just hit the rename button. It takes you back up here. And you can enter in whatever you want. Let's just call it Y. Hit enter. And yes, I would like to rename it. And now it's called Y. And if I go back to my list, you can also see as you cycle through the list, it jumps across between the waypoints. So here's Y over here. Let's say I want to center Y on the location of the airplane, airplane right now. What I'll do is I'll hit the menu key, scroll down to use the current position, hit the enter key, hit the enter key again, it takes you up here, hit enter once more, hit enter again, and now you can see it just jumped to exactly where the airplane is, and that's all there was for that. Another method we could do is we could hit the new button, and that again gives us the crosshair, and it's going to give us a new uh, waypoint. Here the name is USR000 again, I think that's the default. We can give it the name, hit enter, and we can specify the radial and distance, etc., 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 of how we would like to define this waypoint. So now let's say I want to delete the waypoint, so let's get rid of USR000. So I'll highlight it, I'll just hit the delete button. It says, Do you want to delete it? I'll hit the yes button, and it's now gone. So we can also go to our nearest page now that we have some waypoints defined, and we'll go to the nearest user defined waypoints, and this gives us our little list. And if we activate the cursor and scroll through the list, we can see that the map jumps between the waypoints. Here we've got about three waypoints that coincide, so the map's not jumping around. But once we get to uh, Whiskey Echo, then it does jump out and we can see the change. So that's all there really is to uh, different aspects of waypoints and the different types of waypoints. It's uh, fairly simple. It's, it's very, very common between uh, the nearest pages and also the waypoint pages for the respective different types. So NDBs, VORs, user-defined waypoints, intersections. Once you know how to do one of them, you should know how to do pretty much any other type of subcategory. So that's all there is to it, and it's really that simple.